Hey, praise the Lord. This is Clinton, Brother Clinton, to those of you who are in Christ Jesus. I come to you on this day, the second day of the week, to, to, to explain to you the difference between a Trinitarian and a Christian. And there are many of you who are watching this video right now because of the title, and you kind of have your yourself all ready to get angry at what I'm about to say. Please don't do that. I'm a man of God. I am speaking to you the Word of God, and I'm speaking it to you for your benefit. Um, this is not a forum to try to cause arguments or try to cause uprisings or try to hurt anybody's feelings. Um, if you believe that God is a trinity, I'm coming to you with the Word of God. And I'm, what I'm not doing is I'm not discounting your relationship with God. I'm not saying that you don't know um, the Lord to a degree. I'm not saying that you haven't had experience with God. I'm not saying that He's never spoken to you or led you or even that you're not born again. What I'm saying is that there's a difference between a Trinitarian and a Christian according to the Scripture. The doctrine of Christ is very pure and important. And, and in fact, John said, the, the Apostle John, he said, God is love, but at the same time, he said, if any man come unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. There are many different Jesuses in the world. And the difference between a Trinitarian and a Christian is the difference between the Trinitarian Jesus and the Christian Jesus. Okay. And if you're a Trinitarian, you're still not seeing my point, but please bear with me, and, and I'm going to show you from the Scripture that there is barely a difference. If you're a Christian, you when you say the Lord Jesus Christ, you're talking about the Almighty God of Israel, who created the heavens and the earth, who begat a son, called him by his name, dwelt in him, manifested his name through him, allowed him to be crucified for the sins of the world, took up his body again, ascended into heaven, poured out his spirit, birthed his church, and who is coming again to sit on the throne and judge all men and establish his kingdom on the earth. Okay, That's what the Bible says about the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are a Trinitarian, then when you say Jesus, you're talking about not you're not talking about the Almighty God who came in the flesh. You're talking about one of three persons of the Almighty God. And, and from this point on, when I explain what a Trinitarian believes, I'm going to totally depart from the Scripture <clears throat> because none of this is in the Scripture anywhere. You believe in, in a God called God the Son who is the second person of the Trinity whose name is Jesus. And you believe that this God was sent by another God called God the Father into the world and that these, that these two gods existed together when the world was created and that they created the worlds together. And you believe that this God is coexistent and co-equal with this other God called God the Father. And that somehow when judgment comes, these two gods are going to be standing next to each other or sitting next to each other. Okay. The God that you believe in called God the Son doesn't exist. Okay. And the reason I say that is because as a Christian, I, I believe the scripture. There's no such thing in the scripture. So if the Jesus that you believe in is God the Son, then the Jesus that you believe in is not the God of the Bible. It's not the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. You may call him the Lord Jesus Christ, even as Catholics call their Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jehovah's Witnesses call their Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ. And so do Mormons call their Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, But it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a false god that's made up, and it came from paganism, and it's not according to the scripture. In all of the scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, there is no mention of any god called God the Son. Now you're getting a little angry with me, and you're saying, well, I don't believe there are three gods. Why are you saying I believe there are three gods? Okay, that's a fair question. When I ask you, if you're a Trinitarian, and I ask you, um, why do you believe in the Trinity, or how do you believe the Trinity? You say, well, there's there's one God that's uh, equally existent in three persons, eternally existent in three persons. Okay, what are those three persons? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's what you say, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, I'm going to agree with you a third of the way. God the Father. God the Father is God. Okay, God the Father is in the Bible. Okay, God the Father is God. He's the only God there is. God the Son. Who is that? There is no God the Son in the Bible anywhere. God the Holy Spirit. Who is that? There's no God the Holy Spirit in the Bible anywhere. Okay. So when you say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you've just mentioned three gods. 
if you can't see that, then I have to say that, that you're blind. Because a five-year-old could see that you just said that. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's three gods. You just said God three times and attributed that to three different deities. Okay. There's no such thing as God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And that's why God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are not in the Scripture. It's written in the Scripture, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. 1 Peter 4.11 so if you profess to be a Christian, okay, and, and I'm saying this, keep in mind, I'm not falsely accusing you, I'm not saying that you don't love God, I'm just saying that if, you, if you're speaking words and phrases that are not in the scripture, you shouldn't be, and that's error, and that's probably why you're a little confused. Even people that teach you the doctrine of the Trinity will tell you that it's a mystery, and don't try to figure it out, because you'll never understand it. Okay? But the Bible says that it's God's will for us to know the mystery of the Godhead. Okay, let me read that for you. Colossians chapter geez, chapter two or three. Pardon me just for a second. I find it for you. Colossians chapter two. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. Pardon me, this is Colossians chapter two, verse two. And unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Okay? So it's God's will, and it was Paul's will, for people to come to the knowledge of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Okay? So it's God's will that you know him. And Jesus said, This is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. In John chapter 17. So it's not God's will for you to be confused about who he is. It's his will for you to know him, know who he is. Okay? So the reason that these Trinitarian teachers have told you that it's a mystery and that you'll never be able to understand it, so don't even try, is because what they're teaching you is nonsense. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing. In all the scripture, there is no God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, eternal Son, coexistent, three persons, co-eternal, right hand of the Father, um, all these words and phrases that people use to teach you this Trinitarian doctrine don't exist in the scripture. And Peter said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The reason for that is, is if we speak as the oracles of God, then we'll be speaking truth. But if we change it for our own opinions or for theological nonsense, then it becomes confusion. And we can't do that. Okay, that's perversion, that's adultery. When you adulterate something, it's when you put something in it that doesn't belong there so that it's no longer useful for what it was intended to be. Okay? So let's not take a Catholic pagan teaching that's, that's not in the scripture anywhere and try to make it fit into the scripture like you would take the wrong piece of a puzzle and try to pound it in and make it fit when it doesn't fit. Why don't we just take the right piece that's supposed to fit there and another piece, the right piece that's supposed to fit there and put them together and they all fit together perfectly, effortlessly. When you look at the scripture, the scripture is very plain. It means what it says. But when you try to force a doctrine into the scripture that doesn't belong there, then, then you come up with verses of scripture that don't make sense, that you don't understand, and that you have to try to re-explain with the witchcraft and nonsense of theology by going back to original Greek and Hebrew and saying that the words of the scripture really don't mean what they say and assigning other meanings to the words instead so that they fit into your doctrine. Well, that takes so much work. And at the end, it will profit you nothing because you'll perish. But if you'll just submit yourself to God and believe his word as it's written, and if you don't understand something, ask him a question, ask him to reveal it to you, rather than turning to theologians and commentaries to try to re-explain it and redefine it. Then you'll do well. My friends, there are there is no trinity in the scripture. There is no triune God. There is only one God. He has come in the flesh. His name is Jesus Christ. He begat a son and called him by his own name. The Son of God got his name by inheritance. The Son of God is just that. He is the Son of God. He's not God the Son. He is the Son of God. There's verily a difference. So if your Jesus is God the Son, then you're not a Christian. You're a Trinitarian. Because there's no such thing as God the Son, and you have set yourself outside of the doctrine of Christ by proclaiming a God called God the Son. And therefore the Bible says you have not God. For he that transgresseth, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. Okay? 
So if you're proclaiming a God called God the Son and another God called God the Holy Spirit, then you have set yourself outside of the doctrine of Christ and therefore you have not God. But if you're proclaiming, as the scripture says, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then you are within the doctrine of Christ. Okay? If you're proclaiming words and phrases, if you're teaching with words and phrases that are not in the scripture, you set yourself outside the doctrine of Christ. If you stick to the scripture, then you are in the doctrine of Christ. Therein lies the difference between a Trinitarian and a Christian. I hope this will be a blessing to you. I'm here for you. If you have questions, I'm more than willing to, to show you from the scripture the answers to your questions. Um, be advised that I'm not going to entertain profanity. Don't use profanity when you comment because it's not even going to appear. I'm not even going to converse with that because it's ignorance and it's rude. Um, and also, please be advised that I don't care for the doctrines of the Catholic Church. I don't care for the doctrines of the so-called Church Fathers. Um, if you think to correct me by anything that I've said, then offer your correction from the Scripture, rightly divided, and I will receive it. But if you offer correction from the Catechism or from the Church Fathers and things like that, uh, or from theologians, I'm not going to accept that because that's not correction. That's not profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. Only the Scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, for correction because it is given by inspiration of God. Okay? So, and you may feel that the words of Justin Martyr or Irenaeus are, are given by inspiration of God, uh, but if they contradict the Scripture, then I have to disagree with you. Okay? And, and I'm going to go with the Scripture, the written Word of God. So I'm here for you. If you need me, if you want to ask me questions, go ahead. I'm here to help you. I'm happy to do so. That's what I'm here for. But please be advised that I'm not going to get into long and extended arguments about your opinions about Trinity and, and things like that. I'm only interested in what the Word of God says. And if we can speak together according to the oracles of God, then I know that we'll both come to the same truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and peace be to you who are serving the Lord Jesus Christ.